Good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you all for joining uh, this webinar this afternoon. Um, just to give you a quick introduction as to what we'll be covering, um, we'll be introducing the new requirements for the Welcome um, Trust in terms of submitting uh, plain language summaries on Welcome Open Research. This is a publishing platform for Welcome Trust grantees um, to share research quickly through uh, a transparent open access and post publication peer review model. Um, so all authors are required to include a plain language summary, as I said, as part of their submission um, to welcome open research. And in order to comply with this requirement, we'll be um, outlining uh, what exactly a plain language summary is, why they are valuable and how to write an effective plain language summary that can be used to greater enhance uh, your research and make an impact. Um, this will include a description of some example uh, plain language summaries. Oh, that exist already on Welcome Open Research and represent best practice for wider adoption. Um, in terms of how the webinar will go ahead, um, if I could kindly ask you to drop any questions that you may have in the Q&A box um, and then I'll be moderating them at the end of the webinar. Um, and joining us um, as presenters today, um, in order of uh, them presenting, is uh, George Cooper and Aki McFarlane. Um, George Cooper is a senior associate publisher at F1000. Um, this is the open uh, the publishing platform for Welcome Open Research. Um, George has worked in academic publishing for over 10 years, managing and developing publications in health sciences, global development, communication studies, cultural heritage and anthropology. Beyond his role at F1000, George is also completing a PhD at UCL Centre for Publishing. Um, and he's researching political censorship and knowledge equity in scholarly publishing. Um, Aki is Open Research Specialist in Wellcome's Research Environment Team, whose ambition is that research that we fund and the process by which um, they are open, engaged, ethical and efficient. Aki uh, is responsible for Wellcome Open Research and Wellcome's policies relating to openness in research, as well as working across the portfolio on how best Welcome can facilitate openness throughout the life cycle of a research project for Welcome's funded researchers. OK, um, so over to George, please. Thanks for that, Sam. Um, so I hope you can all see my screen. And I'll just maximize that. Um, all right. So yeah, I hope you can see that OK. Um, Thanks very much for joining everyone. So um, yeah, we've had thanks for the introduction as well, Sam. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll jump in to the content, given that you've uh, summarised it quite nicely, what we'll be covering today. Um, before getting on to the plain language summary, I thought I'd give you a, just a brief introduction about what Welcome Open Research is and the model that it uses, in case this is the first time you've heard about the platform. Um, so to describe it in brief, Welcome Open Research is a platform for welcome funded researchers publish any outputs connected to their research, open access with no author facing fees. Um, this is what the kind of main homepage looks like. That's the URL if you want to explore it whilst I'm talking. Um, it's a different, it's different from a standard journal in many ways, which we're going to see in a moment. Um, as I said, it's a place um, for you as a welcome up funded uh, uh, researcher, that, that is the, uh, the case. Um, so in terms of the model, um, this is what one of the kind of key uh, unique features of the platform is so it follows a post-publication open peer review model which is broken down here um so yeah to break that down a bit uh, briefly the author uh, submits to the platform as you would a, a standard academic journal and then your subject is subject to a variety of pre-publication checks to make sure that you complied with the various ethical and publishing policies that the platform um, abides by and then um, assuming your, your submission has passed those checks, it will be published and uh, it will receive a DOI and it will be indexed in Google Scholar. Um, at that point, you can't submit then your article for publication in another peer-reviewed journal. You've kind of committed to publishing on Welcome Open Research. And, and at that point, um, our team of in-house editors will then start to invite qualified peer reviewers to conduct open peer review and recommend revisions to your article. Um, You'll be invited to respond to the comments that you receive and to revise your article accordingly until it's past peer review 
and the uh, the different versions that your article is um, prepared uh, will be published and linked together uh, on the platform as well. Then once you've received, once your article has been approved uh, by the peer reviewers, um, it will be sent to further indexes and repositories such as PubMed, PubMed and uh, Scopus for uh, what come up in research. So another feature of the model that um, that's quite unique really is the diversity of article types that you can publish on the platform. Um, so the intention here is that not only is welcome open research open in terms of um, content being open access and open peer review, but also in, in terms of encouraging kind of broader open research practices when it comes to sharing each step of the research life cycle. Um, so these stages could include publishing a review article at the kind of concept formation uh, stage of your research, um, publishing an initial uh, study protocol uh, or even a method article when you're at the planning stage. Um, a data collection um, and data deposition as well. You might want to publish a data note explaining you know, how your data was collected, where you can, it can be found, the potential uses or reuses of that data. And likewise, any software or code developed in the course of your research can be published in that way. And then, like normal, when you reach the analysis stage, you might be uh, ready to publish a, a kind of fully fledged research article, which you can do on the platform, or um, brief reports for individual findings that you want to share as well as they emerge. Um, so that's the, the model in brief. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Aki, who's going to tell you a bit more about the new requirements on the platform for plain manual summaries. Thank you. Um, perhaps, Sam, I don't know if you want to say anything. We There's a few comments in the chat from people who aren't hearing very well. Uh, and wondering, is the audio coming from my end any better? Uh, Your audio is, is fine, I think. Um, George, I'm not sure whether it was a microphone issue on on your laptop yeah. or something similar. Yeah. Whether you've got a headset or something that would help yeah. clarity. So it's to a head, headset. OK, well, I'll press on and uh, <laughs> George, you can figure out your microphone. All right, thank you. Um, yes, so as uh, Sam was saying in the beginning, since January 2024, we have been uh, requiring a plain language summary with every uh, submission to Welcome Open Research. Um, to let me say a bit about why we've introduced that requirement, um, as well as what a plain language summary is and what they're for. Um, Welcome is a politically and financially independent global charitable foundation. Uh, we support research to improve health and we want everyone to benefit from science's potential to improve health and save lives. Uh, our vision as an organisation is a healthier future for everyone. And that mention of everyone uh, is the key here. So the introduction of plain language summaries really is quite an exciting opportunity to make the research that we fund from Welcome uh, more inclusive and engaging to those outside of the discipline that each article comes from, or even outside of academia. Plain language summaries, uh, also known as lay summaries, um, provide an overview of the research in a in language that can be easily understood by non-specialists. Um, they're written to help ensure the key messages within research articles reach uh, a wider range of audiences than the article itself would. Given that research articles can be full of complex concepts uh, and technical language uh, kind of uh, through necessity. Could you move the slides along, please? Thank you. Um, so these wider audiences that I mentioned, there's a, a couple of examples here. Um, they include researchers from other disciplines, patients, policymakers, educators, uh, and many others who can benefit from or contribute to health improvements. For researchers outside of the specific research discipline that the article comes from, a plain language summary can enable the reuse or growth of uh, existing ideas uh, within the article. For people who are most affected by the findings of the research, plain language summary uh, enables them to better understand and be involved in the research. For policymakers, Plain language summaries can enable the uptake of the research findings into policy and practice. And there's plenty more uh, examples 
um, like this, of course. Um, next slide, please. Sorry, one one back. Thank you. Um, accessible information, as I, as I said, it can inspire innovation um, and collaborations. These could be across disciplinary boundaries or even beyond the traditional scientific community. Um, when diverse voices uh, can understand and contribute to health research, the idea is we can tackle problems more effectively because uh, more voices coming together, especially from uh, communities uh, most affected, um, ideally make the solutions um, more translatable. Yeah. And as more people are, uh, can understand and be involved in the research, uh, we also um, hopefully achieve more effective decision making uh, and advocacy. So basically, uh, in summary, their plain language summaries are now a requirement, but also an opportunity. So by ensuring that Wellcome's research can be understood by everyone, uh, we, we move closer to a world where uh, everyone has access to the health information that they need and thereby kind of moving a little bit closer to improving health for everyone. So now if I could pass back to George to speak a little bit more about what we know about the impact so far of plain language summaries. Thanks very much, Aki. And hopefully you can all hear me okay now. Is that any better? Yeah. I'm seeing thumbs up flying across the screen. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> OK, um, brilliant. So, yeah, as Aki said, over the next three slides, actually, I'd like to uh, really add to what Aki's already presented with a bit of a summary of the current research on the impact of plain language summaries. And full credit to my colleague, uh, Kelly Soldarvin, actually, and Taylor and Francis, who compiled these research findings. And on this slide, I'd like to highlight three studies that suggest some benefits for authors in terms of citations impact in particular and readership, if an author includes a plain language summary in their article. Um, so these are studies that compared views, downloads and citations for articles that included a plain language summary versus those that didn't. Um, the authors in these studies found that, um, you know, in summary, articles that include a plain language summary were more likely to be downloaded and accessed than those without one. So roughly 60% of articles with a plain language summary were downloaded significantly more often than those without. Um, articles with enhanced content generally, so graphical abstracts, um, video abstracts and plain language summaries, and we can come back to the distinctions later if you like. Um, those sorts of articles were associated with a higher number of citations and increased altmetric scores, and that's the a score generated that indicates the level of attention played to content outside of the scholarly literature. So citations on social media, in blogs, on, in policy documents and news reports and things like that. Um, and just to say, all the references um, will be given at the end if you'd like to follow up on some of this research yourself. So zoning in on uh, medical and health research, uh, which obviously covers a lot of the content that's published on Welcome Open Research, a number of studies also demonstrate the value of plain language summaries in terms of communicating research findings to non-researchers like Aki suggested earlier. So these um, are largely qualitative studies looking at the uses and perceptions of plain language summaries for healthcare professionals and patients, um, again among other enhancements like graphical abstracts. Um, so I'm not going to dig into all these findings in, in depth, but some of the headlines that I'd like to highlight, highlight here. Um, so among those who've used, viewed at least one of the um, enhancements, plain language summaries were considered the most useful. 71% uh, so said, said um, that that was the case, um, among, particularly among healthcare professionals um, who rated plain language summaries as very useful or extremely useful versus um, videos or infographics and other kind of more visual ways of displaying content summaries. Um, the availability of a plain language summary was associated with an increased likelihood of um, healthcare professionals sharing information from research with patients. Um, and doing so kind of addresses a, a need that's well documented among patients who often struggle to find relevant information about healthcare interventions, who get frustrated or confused by irrelevant information from research and often don't understand how it relates to them. So it's trying to address that, that need. Um, and finally, just to say, to highlight on this slide, um, 
These benefits extend beyond healthcare specific areas <clears throat> to lay leaders of research in general. Um, so along, again, alongside things like video abstracts, uh, one study here suggests that plain language summaries produce the highest comprehension, understanding, enjoyment, and desire for more updates among um, other article enhancements. And this is true for readers with science-based backgrounds, as well as the public, from the sample included in the study, which also included outputs outside of applied research in the health sciences, uh, capturing fields like genomics as well, that were kind of more, um, yeah, more academic or science, uh, scientific. So yeah, that's that's a kind of summary of the, some of the main motivations for for um, including a plain language summary in your research. At this stage in the presentation and the webinar, I'd like to run through some of the practicalities of, of actually writing one and how they'll be presented on the platform. Um, so on, on the right, you can see what a plain language summary looks like on Welcome Open Research. It's published as a core component of the article beneath the abstract. It's fully typed set and tagged in XMLs as well, so it's um, discoverable um, and accessible on the same on a par with the rest of the content. Um, in terms of how to actually write one, on the left, you've, this is a breakdown of our um, content guidelines for a plain language summary. So the sorts of things that they typically include. Um, as a general rule, the best and most useful plain language summaries will be interesting as a starting point and, and also advocate for your work um, for this wider audience. So that's the kind of guiding principle here. In terms of the content itself, um, it should include the title of the study, who carried out the research and any competing interests they might have faced, uh, where and when the study took place, why um, the research was needed in the first place, um, some of the main questions or topics that were studied, uh, what you did, so your design and methods in very brief terms, who participated, uh, what you found out, what the main conclusions are and what they mean uh, for a wider audience, um, what some of the limitations might have been in the study, and that's really important to include that, not to kind of gloss over that, uh, even in a short summary, and um, the wider context and potential value for the field or for, for society. And that's often something that's not really addressed so much uh, in an abstract front and center, it should be kind of central in a plain language summary. Um, in terms of actually writing it, uh, a plain language summary, here's some, again, some more advice about how you should go about doing that. On the right, you know, you can see this um, plain language summary that's been zoomed in a bit more so you can see how this um, plays out in practice, but um, it effectively keeps things brief, in term, particularly in terms of sentences themselves so use short clear sentences and phrases in neutral language um, doesn't have to be emotive language it should be objective um, uh, in tone but trying to keep it a bit um, shorter a bit more um, concise um, avoid jargon complex grammatical structures and abbreviations if you do need to use a technical term or an abbreviation you should explain it the first time that you use it um, try to keep the overall summary between 150 and 200 words um, if it's accompanying a particularly short article type, like a case report, you can have a shorter plain language summary of between 50 to 100 words. Um, ensure that the plain language summary accurately refl reflects the information in your article, the data that you presented. Um, again, avoid just kind of providing opinions about the research or um, about the findings that can be considered misleading or um, misrepresentative. And try to use the active voice throughout rather than the passive voice. So, for example, you could say Dr. Smith's team re reported several improvements instead of several improvements were reported by Dr. Smith's team, which is, um, yeah, perhaps a, a little clunky and a little um, less direct as well. So on this slide, I thought I'd just give you an, an excerpt of a summary of some research, and I'd like you to um, Maybe get, just, just think a bit about whether this reflects some of the advice you've seen. Um, maybe you could put some comments in the chat about whether um, there are some aspects of this that don't align very well with the, um, the advice that we've seen. But yeah, I'll give you a moment to just read that and then we'll talk about to what extent that's a good plain language summary. Just to say as well, I can't see the comments. So if any comments do come in, just just uh, slam Aki, feel free to, to, to interrupt me and, and let me know. But um, So as you're looking at that, I think 
clearly there are some some good elements to this. So I think the the uh, particularly the first and last paragraph are written in fairly plain language. It's quite liberal use of acronyms, but they are introduced in the text, which is what we do expect. Um, there is a smattering of technical language, so zero survey, for example, not all readers will know what that is. Um, it is outcomes focused, certainly. Um, what I would ask you to think about is whether that's the most comprehensible way of presenting outcomes to a lay reader. It's very dense, I would say. A lot of numerical information. There's some use of um, some symbols that um, a non-scientific audience might um, not commonly read or be familiar with. Um, in terms of length, it's quite long. It's a little more than 200 words, um, so maybe not fully um, abided by the advice that we've got. And as a spoiler, that's because this isn't actually a plain language summary, um, but it's a structured abstract, which is close, but not quite the same thing. Um, so to, to show you what the plain language summary should look like for this article, um, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So the previous slide was a structured abstract of, from this study, and this is the plain language summary that's been developed from that abstract. And as you can see, there's some overlap but there are some quite important differences. So we've got a new title for the summary itself that's describing the central outcomes and not just the subject of the study. Um, so and that is HIV negative men may avoid rural clinics um, fueling tuberculosis crisis in South Africa. So that's the central finding that's really front and center here. Um, again, the sentences are shorter. The length overall is shorter. It's well under 200 words. Um, very limited jargon, all introduced in the text. Um, but I think again, a core a central thing here is that is the focus on context and one central outcome in plain language. So the, the sort of so what of this research is really crystal clear. You've got that key takeaway at the end um, that people can you know um, understand, I think, and, and, and decide about whether they can apply that research in their field. And so on this slide, again, it's another structured abstract, obviously. And, and here we've got the headings here from a structured abstract. So again, you know, it sort of covers, covers similar ground, but there are some stylistic differences here that are important. Um, so again, it's mostly in plain language. Um, the outcomes section, that, that results sentence is actually quite good, and it's not far off what you'd expect to see in a plain language summary. So a succinct one sentence description, really, of the central outcome. Um, but overall, it's, it's more formal academic style. There's some methodological jargon like thematic analysis, um, zoonic disease. You might want to introduce what that is. Um, it's a bit too long. And the conclusion section, the sentences there are really a bit too complex and long, really. Like, um, lots of subclauses. That that whole paragraph is just three sentences made up of various subclauses. And so you'd want to kind of break that down, I think, if you're going to build a plain language summary of, um, off of that. There's a bit of passive voice in there as well. So the FTGs were done in the local language and audio recorded. Who were they done by? You might want to lead with a subject there. So the researchers conducted FGDs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, you can see how that's been developed in the next slide again. So here we're not getting bogged down in methodology so much. Um, this discussion of the interview design and the thematic analysis is being condensed really to researchers talk to 30 livestock keepers in Zambia, etc. No mention of the analysis methods. It's more outcomes focused like before. Um, some contextual considerations here. So livestock holds immense cultural, uh, social and economic significance for communities in Zambia. So helping to frame that research and again answer why it's, why it's important, why it was needed. Um, and then we've got a clear statement of the outcome and application at the end, like before. So to build trust and align interests with those of the livestock keepers, um, the researchers should be aware of and respect community preferences, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, I hope that's been helpful in terms of illustrating the principles that we've introduced. These are um, summarized again here. So plain language is a summary. It's required on all articles on welcome open research. Um, Central recommendation is to keep it brief to the sentence length and overall length, avoid jargon, make sure that it's accurate, ideally get someone else to read it um, after you've prepared 
your plain language summary. Um, someone who perhaps doesn't have a scientific background or certainly doesn't work in your field to ask them if they understand what it's what your research is about. Um, and focus on the so what and make that sure that's front and center, the kind of yeah, that central outcome. And on the right, we've got um, a quotation from two members of the board of the Galanos project. And this is a uh, project trying to develop living systematic reviews of the research base, evidence base on mental health. Um, and this is a project that's really geared towards helping to communicate research findings to uh, wider audiences outside of um, mental health research, but particularly people who work in those um, in um, healthcare professions who could do something with this evidence. And they, they've given some a, quite a nice summary of some of the benefits here of preparing a plain language summary. And, and I think what I like here is this emphasis on transparency as being one of the central benefits. So not hiding behind jargon or the kind of um, complexities of of the uh, of a kind of traditional research article um, and try to be really open and transparent about what you did and what you found out, which is, I think, a core component of open research in general, um, which this platform aims to um, represent. Um, so before we get to the Q&A, um, there are some more resources that I'd encourage you to look at about preparing a, a plain language summary for welcome up and research. Um, and then we've got some just general um, plain language summaries uh, resources at the bottom. Um, we'll circulate these slides as a PDF so you can access them after the webinar. And we've got the yeah studies cited earlier if you'd like to dig into that evidence base a bit more. Um, so thank you very much for listening to us. I'll stop sharing my my slides and hand over to the Q and A. Thanks, George. Um, yeah, just to remind everyone to drop your questions in the Q and A tab. Hopefully that's clear at the top of the screen. Otherwise, I think it'd be fine as well in the comments. Um, but as a first question, um, can the use of AI, well, can AI be used to write? a plain language summary. Thanks, Sam. Um, so I'll start with that one, actually. And Anaki, maybe you want to might not say what the uh, welcome perspective might be on, on use of AI, but in terms of like publishing policy as the publishing provider. So we typically only allow AI to be used to kind of polish an article overall, so help to help with language editing or formatting. So in principle, that can be extended to cover a plain language summary. Um, uh, we've got some ethical policies around the use of AI in research outputs, and essentially we, the author would have to declare that the AI, that AI was used, uh, even if it's been used in that way as part of the submission, um, just so that's, again, transparent for the reviewers who look at the submission. Um, we would ask you to be extremely careful to check that the plain language summary is accurate, so you should be thorough about checking the results of whatever AI is generated against your article, particularly the outcomes. There's a, quite a lot of research out there now about AI based summaries of research and um, you can, you, you know, th there are some concerns around things like false positives or false findings finding their way into AI summaries. So we'd encourage you to look out for that. Um, but yes, it's not a blanket no, but it's a kind of proceed with caution if that's what you'd like to do. Um, yeah, I don't know, Aki, if you've got anything to add to that. Uh, yes, no, it's a similar sort of within welcome funding applications. The guidance really is you need to be really aware of the limitations uh, of AI and use it responsibly within kind of any um, legal and ethical frameworks that are, which will obviously be be quickly changing um, in the the current uh, environment. So always kind of being aware of um, what the current um, issues are and um as I said uh using responsibly and being aware as well i think uh that um feeding information into um these um ai models um doesn't is not it can be the information can then be kind of ingested into that model so i think if you're preparing these articles ahead of uh time you want to be aware of kind of how much is going out uh, into that model uh, and it's not purely for your uh, use. So being aware that um, that that's a possibility as well. Thanks both. Um, a question from Vigila. 
Is it okay that the title of the plain lang language summary is different than that of the research article? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So it, it isn't always, um, but it's an option that you can, that's available to you for you to include a title, a title of the plain language summary, essentially, um, that again, maybe draws out that central finding or the central, if there's one thing that you could tell anyone in a sentence about what this study is about or the, what, you know, what the kind of central outcome is, that, that could kind of be the title of your plain language summary. Um, and that's again, useful for you if you want to um, use that plain language summary and other means, say like on social media or through any other engagement work that you've done, or also as to try and get your research featured in news outlets. You know, you've got that succinct summary and that succinct title that could be used and adapted for those purposes as well. Um, but it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to come up with a new title if you don't want to, or if the title that you already have, you feel is sufficiently descriptive in that kind of way. Um, but yeah, it's just something that a kind of stylistic feature that you can um, incorporate into your plain language summary if you want to. Right, and a question from Rosemary. Uh, what is the difference between plain language summaries and article abstracts? Um, yeah, so I think I'd, I'd, I'd return to some of the advice before and I think just highlight that I think the main difference is really stylistic um, rather than content. If, we, if I just um, refer back to some of the things we said that you should kind of include in terms of the content itself, a lot of this is what you would include in an abstract as well. So that the title, what you did, what your methods were, um, why the research was needed and so on. I would say maybe the emphasis on the kind of wider justification for your research um, should be more prominent in a plain language summary um, and that maybe a few um, contextual framing sentences um, which might not be necessary for like a research abstract but I think the main differences you know that's the content difference but the main differences are stylistic in terms of keeping it keeping this you know your sentence structure short simple um, trying to avoid technical jargon or using it in a very careful way where you introduce what those terms mean um, and um, yeah, writing in a more direct um, way about the research using the active voice. So putting the subject at the beginning of each sentence rather than having like a kind of object and subject sentence, which you can often find in academic writing. Um, but as I said before, it's not to say that plain language summaries are somehow uh, less rigorous um, and less objective. They should still have a neutral tone and they should be certainly accurate and only really reflect what you're demonstrating in the article, not your own opinions. Um, but yeah, they're the core differences. And um, those that composition guidelines slide and the link that is at the end of the presentation, I'd encourage you to look back at that when you come to writing one, because uh, that kind of really highlights those differences for you as well. Can I add to that as well? I think a good way to look at it is to understand the different audiences of a plain language summary and an article abstract. Your article abstract is sort of a condensing down the article for someone who would have the technical understanding to read the entire article but is looking for a quick um, recap of it. But the plain language summary is really translating your article for a totally different audience, someone who cannot understand the full kind of technical detail of your article. And you really need to get the key message across to um, that audience without getting into, um, as George said, all that real technical uh, detail. Great, thank Excellent. you. Um, so you also mentioned graphical abstracts. Um, what options are there to include graphs and picto pictograms in plain language summaries? That's a good question. So yeah, these these are other ways of summarising research that are available on some in some publications. I think uh, Welcome Open Research doesn't currently offer the option of um, preparing a graphical abstract. Um, not to say that it's not something that we would explore in the future. Um, graphical abstracts is uh, yeah essentially a visual way of of demonstrating what your main research findings were um, from your um, study and and yeah you could use that in terms of like presenting a graphical display of um of that what those main research findings were and maybe with some information in that image about how you conducted the study almost like a research poster and uh, that you might present at a conference 
Um, video abstracts are also another means that people have been using to summarize um, the content in an article. They, they normally accompany a text based um, abstract. And I think that's normally the case as well for graphical abstracts as well. So it's, an, as I said before, kind of an enhancement on a text based abstract. Um, and sometimes they're, they're used interchangeably as well um, in terms of like a video abstract or a video plain language summary. They're typically the one and the same thing, really. Um, there's nothing preventing you, obviously, developing a video based on a plain language summary that you use, um, that you can disseminate on social media. We'd actively encourage you to do that, absolutely. And the plain language summary that you develop in the course of um, meeting the requirement of welcome research um, can be really useful. And we've had some feedback from authors who've already gone on to do that, actually, uh, to kind of um, even on TikTok and other social media platforms like that, um, describe their research in in plainer terms, uh, having produced a plain language summary. Um, but yeah, that's that's the kind of difference. Okay, so next question from Shilpa: um, If an article is based on research related to a health system and not any community, who are the lay persons to be considered? I.e., the article is not for and about lay persons, what should be the approach? So I think that's about the audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can say a couple of things about that. I might hand to Aki as well, hand over to Aki on that question from the, the welcome perspective uh, too. I would say that even an article that's a, about health systems, there will be lay people for whom that will be valuable, um, or at least should have been considered in the kind of construction of that research. Uh, assuming that you want that research to have an impact outside of just that field. So you may not have explicitly and directly involved lay people in the research design or in the study itself. Um, but I would say all research you're going to want to present to audiences out, you know, not who aren't just inside of your inside your field. And the, the intention of the plain language summary is, is not just to kind of commute your communicate your research to um, lay people who are directly affected by your research are directly involved in it, but people who you would intend, you would kind of intend to communicate your research to as part of a kind of strategy of trying to to actually achieve some impact in the real world, in society, uh, and also in other research fields as well to communicate, as Aki said earlier, to people outside of your kind of core subject area. Um, so yeah, the intention there is that if all articles have a plain language summary, that's already part of your um, research communication plan, really. That's something that you can go on and do effectively. Um, but yeah, in some cases, it's quite obvious, I suppose, who your lay people might be. It might be that the research was designed specifically to speak to a particular community. Um, but in other cases, it, it might be a little bit more general about, yeah, speaking to people who you might want to influence, like policymakers, for example, um, or, um, yeah, other individuals, other stakeholders. Um, who might be involved and also it helps you to kind of communicate your research to people who might fund research to other research funders uh, in plain language terms um, but yeah I'm sure Aki you've got more to say about that. No I agree I think it, it can be difficult sometimes to identify you know what audience might be interested in your research especially when it's quite broad like as you were saying Shilba health systems uh, which obviously have a a wide range of um, stakeholders. They might be the policy makers, the governments uh, who uh, support or run the health system. But there's also kind of uh, clinicians or health workers within the health systems who might be interested in research on the system that they work in. And going even broader, there's, there's patients um, or communities uh, who use uh, the health system who might be interested in understanding a bit more about the health system that they use. So I think there are potentially quite a lot of um, lay audiences for an article about health systems. Um, but as you say, it, it can be sometimes a bit challenging when it's not, you know, a specific disease focus uh, indeed. Um, are uh, plain language summaries expected in all research communications or may be required by the publishers? Um, well, so in, in terms of um, the requirements for welcome re open research specifically, 
Uh, it covers all article types, if that's part of the question, uh, except for editorials. So basically, essentially any research output um, that's published on the platform, there is now a requirement that that will be accompanied by a plain language summary. <coughs> um, in terms of other publications, um, while there are other open research publishing platforms that we provide in partnership with other funders, uh, again in healthcare research, like uh, NIHR open research that also have a requirement. Um, so these requirements are becoming more common, I think, particularly in health and medical fields, but not solely in that, those fields. Um, in terms of the wider sort of scholarly publishing um, environment, I would say that they're, um, yeah, they're not commonly required or mandated, um, but that's the direction of travel. Um, and increasingly we're seeing um, publications that publish solely um, plain language summaries of research. Um, so what, what, what we call plain language summary publications, um, uh, they're becoming more common as well. So there's, there's an increased emphasis across scholarly publishing to publish, um, yeah, lay descriptions, lay summaries of the research literature. Uh, and again, referring back to that Galanos project as well, it's, it's really quite critical to do that in some of these fields where there's, yeah, the evidence base needs to be summarised and then communicated to um, to lay people, stakeholders and the various kind of groups that Aki was just describing earlier. Um, but yeah, it's not a requirement across the board, but it's increasingly becoming a requirement, I think, for a lot of publications in this area. OK, uh, reminder for any other questions at this stage, I've got one more. Um, does anyone check the plain language summaries as part of the submission process? Uh, yes, yeah, uh, I can answer that. For, I'll come up in research. Um, so our desk editors, uh, who I mentioned earlier, they're the people who will be responsible for finding peer reviewers as well and conducting the initial checks on the articles that are submitted. Um, they'll do a, they will look at the plain language summary and, and, and make sure that it's, well, it's for the article and that the kind of, you know, the core components are there. Um, we also expect our peer reviewers to to check the content as well uh, a bit more thoroughly just to make sure that it's accurate. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, I think it's important to do a bit of prior checking yourself when you prepare a plain language summary because you're the best judge of whether it's an accurate reflection of what your central outcomes are, I think, from the research. Um, and I think that step of asking someone else just to read it before you submit an article is really valuable <coughs> um, to get that initial bit of feedback and to improve it too. Um, but yeah, it is checked as part of our publishing process. Great. Well, there's no more questions coming through at this stage, so I think we'll conclude it there. Um, but yeah, thanks again, everyone, so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it to George and Aki for any concluding remarks. <laughs> Yeah, thanks everyone for, for joining, really. Um, as I said, yeah, I'd, I'd really encourage you to, to to dig into some of those resources that I sent around that are very useful. That, um, yeah, the guide uh, that's linked to on the submission pages for Welcome Open Research uh, is the kind of primary place to look at for advice on how to prepare a plain language summary. Um, yeah, I think we hope you just, we hope you find the process of writing one valuable for your own uh, efforts as a researcher and, and to speak to those wider audiences, like I said. Um, yeah, anything you'd like to add, Aki? Uh, yes, no, I think thank you, uh, everyone, for joining. And if you do have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And uh, yeah, I just echo what George said. I think that actually the act of writing the plain language summary can really kind of bring into focus um, what you're working on, why you're working on it, and who it's for. Uh, and that can be um, a really nice uh, part of the process. So uh, <laughs> if you don't mind me saying, um, enjoy the new requirement <laughs> to uh, write a plain language summary and um, really try to, to bring the value out of it for yourself as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.